Let's dive deep into the world of adverbs and explore some advanced concepts. Comparative and superlative. Adverb forms. Just like adjectives, adverbs have comparative and superlative forms to show degrees of comparison. For most adverbs, we simply add more and most before the base form to create the comparative and superlative. For example, quickly becomes more quickly and most quickly. However, some one-syllable adverbs, like fast and hard, take the ear and est endings, just like their adjective counterparts. Imagine you're comparing two runners. You might say, John runs faster than Mike. Here, faster is the comparative form of the adverb fast. If you were comparing three or more runners, you'd use the superlative form. Sarah runs the fastest of all. Irregular adverbs, such as well, have irregular comparative and superlative forms, like better and best. Adverb placement. Now, let's talk about where adverbs go in a sentence. Adverbs of manner usually come after the verb or after the object if there is one. For instance, she sang beautifully or he opened the door quietly. However, if the object is long, the adverb can come before the verb. Like in, she quickly picked up the pieces of the shattered vase. Adverbs of place and time usually come after the verb or object, but they can also be placed at the beginning or end of a sentence for emphasis. For example, she's going to the park tomorrow, or tomorrow she's going to the park. Adverbs of frequency like always, usually, and never typically go before the main verb, but after the verb to be. Let's say you want to describe a chef's cooking skills. You could say, he chopped the vegetables skillfully and quickly prepared a delicious meal. In this sentence, skillfully and quickly are adverbs of manner placed after the verbs they modify. Adverbs of frequency. Adverbs of frequency have specific placement rules in English. They typically go before the main verb, but after the verb to be. For example, I always brush my teeth before bed or she is rarely late for work. When using adverbs of frequency with auxiliary verbs, they go after the first auxiliary, like in, I have never seen a UFO. Imagine you're describing your weekend routine. You might say, I usually sleep in on Saturdays, but I never miss my Sunday morning yoga class. Here, usually and never are adverbs of frequency placed before the main verbs sleep and miss. Special adverbs and constructions. Some adverbs like enough and to have unique properties. Enough comes after the adjective or adverb it modifies while to comes before. For instance, she's tall enough to reach the top shelf or he's too tired to go out tonight. Additionally, we can use constructions like as, as, and to, to, to compare actions. For example, she sings as beautifully as a nightingale, or he works too slowly to finish the project on time. Let's say you're describing a friend's cooking skills. You could say, she cooks well enough to impress her dinner guests, but she's not quite as skilled as a professional chef. Here, well enough and as skilled as are special constructions that compare your friend's cooking abilities to a certain standard. Adverbs of degree. Adverbs of degree, like very, extremely, and quite, are used to modify adjectives, adverbs, and verbs. They help us express the intensity or extent of an action or quality. These adverbs usually come right before the word they modify, as in, she's very talented, or he runs extremely fast. Imagine you're describing a thrilling roller coaster ride. You might say, the roller coaster was absolutely terrifying, and my heart was beating incredibly fast. In this sentence, absolutely and incredibly are adverbs of degree that emphasize the intensity of the adjective terrifying and the adverb fast. Sentence adverbs. 
Sentence adverbs like fortunately, honestly, and surprisingly modify the entire sentence and express the speaker's attitude or opinion. They often come at the beginning of a sentence, followed by a comma. For example, fortunately, we arrived at the airport just in time. Or, honestly, I didn't expect the movie to be so good. Let's say you're sharing a story about a lucky coincidence. You could say, surprisingly, I ran into my old high school friend at the grocery store, and we ended up chatting for hours. Here, surprisingly, is a sentence adverb that expresses your reaction to the unexpected event. Inversion with negative adverbs. In formal English, negative adverbs like hardly, scarcely, and rarely can be used at the beginning of a sentence for emphasis. When this happens, the subject and verb are inverted, just like in a question. For instance, hardly had I stepped out the door when it started raining, or rarely does she miss a chance to travel. Imagine you're describing a very unlikely event. You might say, never in a million years would I have guessed that I'd win the lottery. In this sentence, never is a negative adverb placed at the beginning, causing the subject I and the auxiliary verb would to be inverted. Adverb order. When using multiple adverbs in a sentence, it's essential to put them in the correct order to avoid confusion and maintain clarity. The general rule is to place adverbs in the following order, manner, place, frequency, time, and purpose. For example, she sang beautifully, manner, on stage, place, every night, frequency, last week, time, to raise money for charity, purpose. Imagine you're describing a friend's study habits. You could say, he diligently, manner, studies at the library, place, every day, frequency, in the evening, time, to prepare for his exams, purpose. By following the correct adverb order, your sentence becomes clear and easily understandable. Adverbs versus adjectives. Sometimes it can be tricky to decide whether to use an adverb or an adjective in a sentence. A simple rule to remember is that adjectives modify nouns, while adverbs modify verbs adjectives, and other adverbs. For example, she's a fast runner, adjective modifying the noun runner versus she runs fast, adverb modifying the verb runs. Let's say you're describing a delicious meal. You might say, the chef prepared a delicious adjective meal and the flavors blended perfectly, adverb, together. In this sentence, delicious, is an adjective modifying the noun meal, while perfectly is an adverb modifying the verb blended. Flat adverbs. Some adverbs, called flat adverbs, have the same form as their corresponding adjectives. These include words like fast, hard, straight, and late. It's important to use these adverbs correctly to avoid confusion with their adjective counterparts. Imagine you're giving directions to a friend. You could say, drive straight, adverb, for two miles, then turn left. In this sentence, straight is a flat adverb modifying the verb drive. Be careful not to say drive straightly, as this is incorrect. Adverbs in idiomatic expressions. Idiomatic expressions often include adverbs that contribute to the overall meaning. Learning these expressions will help you sound more natural and native-like in your English communication. Here are a few examples. 1. He works hard and plays hard. This means he puts a lot of effort into both his work and leisure activities. 2. She's head over heels in love. This means she's very deeply in love. 3. They're going all out for their anniversary celebration. This means they're doing everything possible to make it special. Understanding and using idiomatic expressions with adverbs will add color and authenticity to your language skills.
Intensifying adverbs. Intensifying adverbs, also known as adverbs of emphasis, are used to add strength or emphasis to the word they modify. Some common intensifying adverbs include absolutely, completely, extremely, really, and utterly. These adverbs can make your language more expressive and powerful. Imagine you're describing a breathtaking view. You might say, the sunset was absolutely stunning, and I was utterly mesmerized by the vibrant colors. In this sentence, absolutely and utterly are intensifying adverbs that emphasize the adjectives stunning and mesmerized, making your description more impactful. Adverbs in comparisons. Adverbs can also be used to make comparisons just like adjectives. The comparative and superlative forms of adverbs are used to show degrees of comparison between actions or qualities. Here are a couple of examples. One, she runs faster than her brother. This is a comparative form. Two, he works the most efficiently of all the employees. This is a superlative form. When making comparisons with adverbs, remember to use more and most for adverbs with two or more syllables, and er and est for one-syllable adverbs. Adverb phrases. Adverb phrases are groups of words that function as adverbs in a sentence. They can modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs, just like single-word adverbs. Adverb phrases often start with a preposition, such as in, on, with, or without. Here are a few examples. 1. She spoke with confidence during the presentation. In this sentence, with confidence is an adverb phrase modifying the verb spoke. 2. He's incredibly talented at playing the piano. Here, at playing the piano is an adverb phrase modifying the adjective talented. 3. They worked without complaint despite the long hours. In this example, without complaint is an adverb phrase modifying the verb worked. Using adverb phrases can help you add more detail and nuance to your sentences, making your language more descriptive and engaging. Adverbs in storytelling. Adverbs are a powerful tool in storytelling as they can help set the mood, describe characters' actions, and create vivid imagery. When used effectively, adverbs can transport your listeners or readers into the world of your story. Imagine you're telling a story about a haunted house. You might say, cautiously, she crept down the creaky stairs, her heart pounding wildly in her chest. Suddenly, a ghostly figure appeared, floating menacingly in the doorway. In this example, the adverbs cautiously, wildly, and menacingly help create a sense of tension and fear, immersing the audience in the story. Let's recap the main points. 1. Adverbs can have comparative and superlative forms, usually formed with more and most or er and est for one-syllable adverbs. 2. Adverb placement depends on the type of adverb and can affect emphasis and clarity. 3. Adverbs of frequency, degree, and sentence adverbs have specific roles and placement rules. 4. Inversion with negative adverbs is used for emphasis in formal English. 5. Adverb order. The distinction between adverbs and adjectives and flat adverbs are important for clear communication. 6. Adverbs in idiomatic expressions. Intensifying adverbs, comparisons, and phrases add depth and nuance to language. 7. Adverbs are valuable tools in storytelling for setting the mood and creating vivid imagery. Remember, Mastering adverbs takes practice, 
so don't be afraid to experiment with different types and placements in your own speaking and writing. Keep an eye out for adverbs in your daily life and try to incorporate them naturally into your language use. Final thoughts and practice. If you found this lesson helpful, hit that like button and share it with your friends who are also on a language learning journey. Subscribe to our channel for more engaging grammar lessons and leave a comment below with your favorite takeaway from this adverb adventure. To further reinforce your understanding of adverbs, try these practice activities. 1. Write a short story or paragraph, focusing on using a variety of adverbs to create vivid descriptions and set the mood. 2. Record yourself speaking about your daily routine, paying attention to your use of adverbs of frequency, manner, and place. 3. Analyze a piece of writing you admire, identifying the different types of adverbs used and how they contribute to the overall effectiveness of the text. Keep exploring the wonderful world of adverbs, and remember that the more you practice, the more confident and proficient you'll become in using them. Let's learn advanced adverb ways, show me skills, brighten days, comparative forms to show more quickly, most quickly flow. To get it right, set the pace. Cool away, making work strong and bright. Faster, flatter in our speech, day and night. Frequency it guides the way. Always, never here to stay. Irregular forms to know better. Best we let it show. Sentence adverbs set the tone. Yeah.